In this example, we have some radical equations to solve. The first one says rad x minus 3 minus 1 equals 0. The first thing to do with these kinds of equations always is to isolate this radical first. So I'll just say isolate the radical first. Okay, and that will go for all of these examples, right? This b as well. You can't really do it in c because there's already one on each side. But by isolate, I mean get it on one side of the equal with everything else on the other. Okay, so that's not so bad. Let's just add one to both sides. All right, that gives us rad x minus 3 equals 1. All right, well, how do we undo a square root? We're trying to get that x inside there. Well, we simply square both sides. Right, squaring both sides will get rid of that square root. And we're left with x minus 3 equals 1. Add 3 to both sides, x equals 4. Now, with radical equations, you always have to check your answers because these will give you extraneous solutions. Extraneous solutions are when you do all the work right and your answer is perfect and you plug it in and it just doesn't work. It's, it seems like it's going to be a solution, but it's actually not. We call those extraneous solutions. Okay, so let's check this here. We're plugging into the original. And by the way, you always want to check in the original, right? Because that's where it could go wrong for these, for these equations. So let's see. Square root of 4 minus 3 minus 1. Does that equal 0? Well, yeah. Square root of 1 minus 1. That does equal 0. Okay, so this works, so this here is indeed our answer. Let's take a look at b. We have fourth root of 2x minus 9 minus 3 equals 0. Right, same idea. We also want to isolate the radical first. We want to do that for all of these. Okay, so let's add 3 to both sides. That gives us fourth root of 2x minus 9 equals 3. All right, well, just like we squared both sides in part A, here we're going to take both sides to the fourth power to get rid of that fourth root. Okay, so to the fourth power here, to the fourth power here. Okay, what does that leave us with? Well, 2x minus 9 equals 3 to the fourth is 81. Now we're simply solving for x, so add 9 to both sides. 2x equals 90. x equals 45. Okay, make sure we check once again. If we plugged in 45 for x, we would get 2 times 45, which is 90, minus 9 is 81. So we're looking at fourth root of 81 minus 3. Does this equal 0? Well, yeah, it does. Fourth root of 81 is 3, and 3 minus 3 does indeed equal 0. Check. So this is a valid answer right here. x equals 45. Part C is a little different. We have square root of 7x minus 4 equals square root of 4 minus 7x. When we have a square root on both sides like this, we simply square both sides. Right, so I'm going to just take this, square both sides. That's going to get rid of both those square roots, leaving us with 7x minus 4 equals 4 minus 7x. All right, get all the x's on the left, everything else on the right. So I'm going to add 7x to both sides. That gives us 14x. And then I'm going to add 4 to both sides equals 8. All right, well, then x must be 8 fourteenths. Well, we can cancel a 2 out of the 8 and the 14. So this leaves us with 4 sevenths. Does it check out? Let's see. Remember to plug into the original. All right, so we're going to plug in up here. So we're looking at square root of... 7 times 4 sevenths minus 4. Does that equal the square root of 4 minus 7 times 4 sevenths? Let's see, the sevens cancel out. Sevens cancel out. That leaves us with 4 minus 4 equals 4 minus 4. 0 equals 0. Yes, indeed, that's true. So our answer here, 4 sevenths.